if you guys could line up. Uh, we have mics over there. And uh, do we have another one over there? And uh, if we could start with the questions. Uh, this is less of a question, more of just a comment. Um, Torvi, you mentioned in your presentation the uh, update to boosters where we can access them in the bars. Uh, looking forward to it. Nothing I'd like to see more than an update to boosters. I would just like to remind you, though, uh, the Australian government, among others, has questionable attitudes towards drug use. It would be a real shame to see the gang get banned in Australia due to this. Just, if you could, could you just do your research on this front? Thanks. Well, we how, how, to them, po 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 potions. how do they work? Potions, they basically, yeah. Yeah, they basically do That's magic. Yeah, I know. They're part Boosters of magic are called somehow. vitamins yeah, in so. our uh, Chinese service. <laughs> true, true fact. Uh, just curious, uh, where is Nathan this year? Uh, Nathan is around. Uh, he's around. Okay. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. If no one else is going to get up here. Um, what are you thinking about uh, future iterations of the Dust 514? I mean, last year we saw some trailers and had some suggestions about, uh, you know, the interaction between getting onto the planet and all that, launching the ships. Are you looking still about being able to like shoot those ships down so we can ruin dust players' days and stuff like that? Noah, you had the whole panel. Uh, well, I mean, we're we're just trying to trying to build it. We're we're uh, looking at just iterating on on our on our <coughs> prototype and and making it fun and awesome. But uh, we're I mean we're not really going into specific detail on exactly any idea on like uh, release date you know next two years three years uh, no comments on re release dates okay uh, but I will say um, I mean ultimately we want to uh, realize the vision we just shown in the trailer which is a seamless integration to all these facets but it obviously will not be like that in the beginning both because I mean it can just all collapse if you don't do this uh, very carefully so uh, and there the man is. Uh, give him a yeah. hand. Yeah! Uh, uh, and also, uh, I mean, these things just take uh, time to do, and we want to release them incrementally. So, uh, I mean, ultimately, all of this will be possible. Exactly what, how it will be prioritized is something that we sort of decide on, a, on an ongoing basis. Thank you all for making this wonderful game and getting us all up to Iceland. So awesome. Thank you guys so much. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys for coming. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, unfortunately, some people know me. So it was quite an effort actually getting on stage here. <laughs> back. Everybody's, yeah, talking to me. I don't know. I've seen you before, though. Yeah, I've been here before. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, thanks. That'd be awesome. Well, see, uh, I have a reputation, obviously. Mm. But yes, next. Well, my name's oh. K1 Jarvis. One of the aspects was <laughs> you're being on captain's quarters for the next expansion. Will people that live in wormholes have access to this through their posses? or play your own stations so they can get out of their pod there rather than just having it as the low sec, high sec play thing. Was the, the question was if you'd be able to walk around in stations in wormhole space, was that the, uh, my beer was going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so I, I'd rather turn, turn it around and say that um, eventually you'll be able to walk around quite a few environments, including your pause, your Titan, your battleship. So it's, I mean, stations is, is only the first environment that you actually start walking around in, so. Well, yeah, but the captain's quarters that we have talked about are not in pauses, no, they're just in uh, stations. So yeah. it just will be literally in stations at the day of release. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, uh, a question for you. Would you really, really want it? Well, for the people that live in wormholes, mm. we don't have access to the stations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, a feature we can never use. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. And for yeah. all the effort you guys are putting into it, as many people as you want should be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a very good point. That's totally. a very good point. But you will be able to fit tech three ships. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm sorry if I'm the only one who cares about this, but what are you guys going to do to the perfect art of mining? <laughs> I kind of like it the way it is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that was going to be my question. What would you want to see with it? Isn't it just perfect? Watching those beautiful lasers on a lazy Friday night, tens of them going at the same time? No, I'm not a miner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think uh, it sort of ties into what Torfi was talking about earlier. Uh, as, we, as we improve the game, we want to use, use systems we already have and, and make them better. And some of the stuff we've talked about is like planetary ring mining, making it look sort of uh, like the like the North Pole. It's it's dangerous and beautiful at the same time. So we don't want Kind of like Iceland. Yeah. As long as I can kind AFK, like I'll be happy. <laughs> 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 yeah, but there are, there are issues with, for example, seating, with re which rely on downtime, which we don't like. And there's a number of things that we want to improve in mining, just the overall experience. Hey guys, um, I was just wondering if CCP is currently happy with the amount of super capitals and their relative power in zero zero space and if there's any plans or changes you guys were looking at for super capitals? Well, I don't think we're unhappy about the number of super capitals. I mean, I, we don't necessarily want the game to be like all about any one specific ship. So, uh, and, and, and the super capitals are sort of the, the biggest badass ships you can get, so it's sort of expected that people would want to get those ships. But obviously we want there to be um, a, a trade-off, and, and we want not necessarily rock, paper, scissors, but, but you know, small gang warfare is just as fun as, as the big fleet stuff, so we yeah. want to. But, but no, we're not happy, but we're not unhappy yet at the same time. So, so I think that... Uh, well, I must uh, say, la I'm last time we, we tried something about carriers, uh, a certain person was almost killed <laughs> online. <laughs> but I think that that Eve evolves around actually having a ship that does something, and then you, then you actually have a counter weapon to it. And I think that uh, super capitals don't really have enough small counter counters to it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Static Zero, Power of the Phoenix. Uh, with the recent additions to the, uh, or the recent replacement of the character creator, obviously it has uh, invalidated or made antiquated my entire getup. Uh, Are you going to ask about a gender change? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask. Would, no. Would I, uh, it, I, I guess I need help with the clothing. Would your um, your clothing designers, the, the people who design the clothing for the characters, would they be willing to help me out uh, engineering a new costume? <laughs> <laughs> you personally. Uh, uh, you should go, you. Uh, if you want help engineer your like, real life costumes, uh, you should go uh, before the Eve store closes. Yes. Uh, Mary yes. Lee, our fashion Mary, consultant, yeah. is there. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sure she would love to help you come up with some new crazy thing which you can come to FanFest with so we can continue to do the cosplay thing <laughs> we've gone for us here. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank okay. you all. For it's it. not cosplay, it's real. <laughs> Eve is That's real. Right. That's right, yeah. Nathan, sorry. <laughs> Good correction. Uh, my second question uh, pertains to the, uh, the technology platform. Um, as, you, uh, as you may or may not be aware, uh, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority recently ran out of IPv4 uh, addresses to, uh, to assign to uh, the regional registers. Without going into too much detail, we are running out of IPv4 addresses mm -hmm. on the Internet. Yep. Is there 
a roadmap in place for IPv6 support? Uh, I wouldn't say that there's a, a roadmap in place, but there's definitely awareness. And uh, on the software side, uh, we've definitely been checking into compatibility with a lot of the things that we've been doing. Uh, we've actually been upgrading a lot of the uh, technology on the networking side. Yes. So I would say that we're in pretty good shape there. I can't really speak to the hardware side, which is tranquility. That would be more Derek Weiss's uh, turf. So I can't really promise uh, what, is go what he has, but I would expect, based on the hardware upgrades that they've been performing there, that we're actually in pretty good shape to flip the switch if we want mm -hmm. to. Yeah, and as you saw in the video, uh, Haldor can most certainly fix the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, though, I, I would have to ask, the last numbers I saw on the IPv6 running out uh, perfectly aligned with the Mayan apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> has, so so has, it's has already fixed. Has moved off for? Yeah, 2012, <laughs> sorry. No, actually, that is the Mayan apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> December 20th. They, they, had, they yeah. had strong vision, those Mayans. Yeah, they did. Internet runs out and everybody yeah. goes Back crazy. then, they were like, <laughs> no okay, IP version 6 will run out about 2012. <laughs> That's the end of the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But I just wanted to add, I mean, it was a great, it, it was actually a good question. The, the thing is that because we're constantly doing these upgrades, I know they sometimes annoy you guys, like, why can't these guys just sit still and let it be? It does allow us to stay ahead of changes like these. Hi, my name is, uh, sorry, my name is Jason Hill. I've been playing since 2003. I'm a member of Fiatal Ascension and Clan Shadow Wolf. The question that I've got, is, yeah, I can see that you're uh, pushing for new player content, which is fine, and I think it's a very good thing. But my question is, are you gonna throw the veterans a bone? Because we are struggling to find things that are keeping us in the game, if that makes any sense. No, no, so, so, so look, look at it this way, is that, that um, sure, we're a company and we want more people to play EVE and that makes more money for us, so we yeah. can actually evolve EVE even faster and, and stronger <coughs> and bigger, right? But at the same time, remember as a player, new players coming in is more cannon fodder for you. Not, uh, yeah, that sounds good, but... So you, you want like more interesting new players. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Artnar, how about you yeah. throw in some... I, I was just going to ask what kind of bone do you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the question is, do you want... Uh, I mean, are you talking about sort of uh, improving on content that's already there for uh, high-end players or new content for high-end players? I think um, for the most of us, I think, um, all right, fair enough, yeah, I've been playing since 2003, but that doesn't mean anything. But we've got the skill points, we've got, just throw us something a little bit more. Yeah, yeah you mean just a progression, basically. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, progression. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a very, uh, it's a, an extremely valid point. It's, it's definitely something we need to look further into and do more of, I absolutely agree. Uh, there are people that have been playing this game for eight years now, and uh, you know, even if, if you can have something like 256 million skill points or whatever it is, 300 million skill points total, uh, it kind of, you know, just becomes uh, finding the next thing to train just because you can, not because it's leading you to somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. There is some, there, there is like an, an unfilled gap there of content that needs to be focused on. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I've got three questions, two small ones. Uh, first Start with of the big one then. All right. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of lots of amazing stuff that you're talking about. You're talking about just walking around in stations in the world, on planets, all over the place. Just walking all over the place. And and shooting in faces, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be sure to remember that. Um, and I was wondering, does that mean, since we have such a such a comprehensive view of the world, we Eve is real, like you're saying all the time. Does that mean that the Eve universe might jump onto the uh, reality, you know, computers world. What's the name? Virtual reality. Virtual reality. Vir reality. Yeah, virtual well, reality. Tor Torve's favorite subject. Virtual <laughs> reality. Okay, before, uh, before Torve takes it, uh, <laughs> since you're Icelandic, uh, what is reality? Mm. Well, is, oh. is reality... Uh. <laughs> is reality having a mint curve loan on your house and going to work because you... <laughs> Uh, have to pay off the loan and you're Dude. never at home because Look you're at always his working. Uh, is, <laughs> yeah, is that really reality? Think. Is that a fun game? Do you sure. enjoy playing that game? Yes, I do. You but do? I don't, okay. just without the loans. Yeah. Reality is that which continues to exist after you stop believing in it. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's Philip K. <Kate>. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm the proud owner of a virtual boy and a virtual reality headset, and I've programmed the driver for it in, vir in Visual Basic. I think you need to explain what a virtual boy is. <laughs> <laughs> Before something terrible It's not happens. like that. It's a failed <laughs> product from Nintendo from the 90s. But uh, 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 we feel that virtual reality, the reality that we live, like him are saying, is much closer to the sensory tricks that were being played with virtual reality headset goggles and, 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 and gloves back in the 90s. A reality that feels real, where you have uh, like uh, an actual attachment to things that are in it, where, where, where your actions have meaning, and uh, the actions of others have meaning, and you have like meaningful relationships with other people, and uh, do meaningfully bad things to them. Uh, that is much more real to me than uh, seeing something in 3D or, or or being able to grab on it with a, with a glove, like uh, Michael Douglas in uh, Disclosure or something like that. Yeah, and in the, or Lawnmower Man. In uh, yeah, yeah, you know. In other news, uh, Torvi really liked Lawnmower Lawn Lawn Man and Lawnmower Man 2, actually, actually which was horrible. Two. Uh, so in line with the question, um, if there will be actually a possibility to enter your ship and actually view anything from your p perspective in the game, we'll just have to see how it goes, right? Right, but of course you just see bubbles. Because yeah. you're in your pod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second question. Well, are, is the base of ships, are the ship possibilities that players are getting a, gaining access to, is it still going to grow? Now, sometimes you, you, know, you go into the market and you look at all the ships you see, and you never see any new you know, battleships or something. And even though they may, might not be necessary, is there thinking about pr progressing on that, you know, adding new things in that field for the players? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, 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 I mean, I'm, not I'm not talking about Tech yeah. 3 or Tech 4. I'm just talking about basic stuff. For, no, you know, when, uh, when we add new stuff, we always want to make sure there's a role for it. And we don't want to eclipse yeah. the, the other stuff. That, so. Sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's basically the barrier is that you know we can add more ships, but we have to have roles for it. The thing is that imagine that we have now about 180, 190 people working on EVO Online. Uh, those people could actually make like four games in a year just straight out. So yes, of course, we are thinking about all ways of expanding EVE, uh, but at the same time, it's a choice between like, you know, does this make sense within the EVE universe? And, and, and crews, for example, have been, you know, a long-standing thing about what we do, but uh, they might come, they might not come. Uh, we're not sure where they fit, but, but just think and ask yourself when, when you're asking us, like, Will you do this or will you do that? Uh, well, we have a lot, of, a lot of ideas of what we want to do because we have, you know, three AAA game teams actually working on EVE right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody else does that, mm -hmm. just us. That's why EVE is going to be forever. All right, for the last question, which is <coughs> hopefully shortest, if you had to guess how many people are working on designing on the, the, the visual aspects of the game, if you uh, have to guess. How I mean, many? Our art department, yeah, uh, art, yeah. art staff art working on EVE now is what, uh, 30 people-ish? Wow. Yeah, it's, it's 30 plus uh, yeah. technical artist, animation, yeah, uh, yeah it, it, I mean. But I yeah. actually want to speak to that as well because it actually isn't a fixed number. Yeah, exactly. Because of the carbon technology, we all use the same tools. Yeah. So for instance, for character creation, when we shipped you all those wonderful new toys, uh, we ramped up severely, and we brought in uh, a, a big chunk of the art team that's actually been working on World of Darkness that's yeah. based in Atlanta. Yeah. And those guys actually deserve a huge round of applause for the work that they put into yeah. it. Thank you. It's amazing. Yeah, and, and I would uh, add a little bit to that, uh, uh, Altor, is that with Carbon, then we have one tool chain, which we also work with a ecosystem of outsourcing partners, yes. which really do the heavy lifting when it comes to the actual modeling of a vast number of assets. And by having a uniform pipeline and a uniform set of uh, guidelines on how to do that, that enables us to even leverage more sort of resources just of the world in general and, 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 and where there are people available to, to create virtual assets by having created Carbon and having created a sort of a common spec for it, really. And I, I can even give you a sense of scale. Uh, you remember Trinity, the, um, well, to date, the biggest expansion that we've done after, of course, now we're delivering uh, in Karna is that that was 200 man years of art hours 
200 man years. That's a lot. Yeah. It's older than I am, well, almost, <laughs> but yeah. So that, that's a sense of scale. Sure. Uh, we're just going to take a brief pause from the queue here, and Mr. Rick Reynolds is going to field questions from Twitter. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're taking some questions. And, and Rory, Rory, could, could, could you pull up the mic a little bit more so we hear better what, what the question is? I'll, no, I'll, I'll tell you. From no, no, there. I mean like the, the row afterwards. Okay. Yeah, but yes. What says Twitter? So first one here is a business question. Ah. Why don't you license carbon after so much time goes into it? Wouldn't it's, that help with revenue? It, it's our competitive advantage against the world. It's never going out from us. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really the secret sauce of yeah. what we do. So, and it, it doesn't make sense for us because, um, as you can see, Eve is a, is a very healthy uh, game for us. And so be selling the secret sauce for that. This is like, you know, you have a secret recipe at your restaurant and you yeah. just start licensing out the recipe. It doesn't make sense. We would rather want to grow Eve and build the other games that we're working on using that technology. We, we, we sometimes say that we're going to take over Mars, but like we have always the secret sauce, which is that somebody's going to colonize Mars and then we're going to invade it so we don't have to colonize it, right? <laughs> That's great. One more here from the internet. How about Alliance Tournament 9? Anything known at all? Beta? Uh, I think there's a dev blog coming out shortly. Uh, so you can just check out uh, dev blogs and follow up on there. But yeah, we, we have plans. It's going to be fun and it has cool rewards. <laughs> yes, we're already started working on those. Yeah. Hi, uh, Sidrek from Vito Corp. Um, <laughs> love you guys. Um, talking about bringing people to CCP games in general, and as was mentioned uh, like three times now, um, would you give us a bit of information about World of Darkness? There are no such things as vampires. <laughs> uh, well, World of Darkness has its own fan fest, which is in New Orleans uh, this fall. So uh, it's called the Grand Masquerade, which uh, I mean, it's quite the event. Uh, I was there last year. So yeah, was, uh, we really quite, sort of uh, uh, tried to build up uh, all the things about World of Darkness to release there, just as we tried to release all the things about the first tier. So, uh, so I mean, okay, can't tell you more. Hi, uh, can you hear me right? Yeah, good. Uh, Wolfgang should. Thank you. Uh, Wolfgang should got to Eve University. Um, right, I really enjoyed the uh, sort of future stuff that you were showing during the CCP present, and specifically the contraband um, mechanic, new mechanic with people, players, catching other people play, other people with contraband, uh, and marking them. Are you willing to provide more information on what the consequences will come from that said marking? Okay. Well, uh, we will be providing that information as, it as the design becomes more mature. Uh, the, uh, there's a number of issues that arise, there's a number of uh, edge cases that need to be thought of and, and, and just things that need to be designed better before we can present it in more detail. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we will <laughs> we'll probably know once you get marked on TQ, but uh, 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 that will come soon at a later date. It looked Can to I me I like people were going to get eaten by lions. I think that's what happens when yeah. you... <laughs> if you're a hippo, by the way, so, yeah. Can I at least Come confirm forward. that consequences will never be the same again? <laughs> well, I think we can safely say that uh, no matter what the contraband system will be and how it will change, uh, it'll get plenty of time in public testing and, and have time to incorporate feedback from the player base before we launch it in TQ. So we won't just change the contraband system overnight without, you know, letting you guys know. Well, that would be mean of us. And yeah. We don't do mean. I look forward to that. Thank you very much. Uh, and, I want to use this opportunity, sorry, but no, since I heard you from EMU University, I've been actually looking for some of you guys around the Fun Fest. <laughs> Could you guys yeah. talk to me, like, afterwards? Because sure you've been hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, the uh, social butterflies. <laughs> That's what we do. Guys, you have to talk to the girl afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Just saying. But I'd like to add one, perhaps one more thing about the contraband is that uh, we are trying to ingrain uh, our mantra of maximizing social interaction, relying on emergence and uh, 
uh, no, you know, maximizing human, human interaction, relying on emergence and making things more sandboxy and less scripted and less NPC, and that's kind of the design philosophy behind uh, giving it to the players, and we're trying to extend that uh, design philosophy into other systems that we will be iterating on in the future. Thank you very much, and I promise to do this. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Go Gunsram. Hello, Hi. I'm Grein, uh, Stimulus with Road Capel. Hi, I'm Nathan. Um, with all the eye candy you guys have been plastering around um, in our ever continuing quest to be elitist space jerks, um, has any of this ship eye candy and the carbon stuff that you guys have been doing have any way to lead to possible custom ship colors? It has a way to. I mean, it's, it's, it's possible, for sure. We're building the technology that may allow you to do that. Okay, peak, peak and a second, a second part of the question, when you guys mentioned uh, ships coming out so they don't step on the toes of other ships, um, do you have anything to say about how super caps are kind of stepping on the toes of dreadnoughts by being absurdly more effective at getting rid of... Yeah, it's really in the name. They, they're called super, and dreadnoughts aren't. <laughs> I mean, it's... Super dreadnoughts. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, dreadnoughts were... We're, we're, we're built to be like anti-structure, anti, anti other cap capital ships, right? And I, I, I think that, uh, you know, over time, we, we will get there. It's not one of our prou proudest moments, but uh, at least I can say that we are aware. But um, yeah, it's, it's, we'll get there. Yeah, I would yeah and like Hilma said, like, we'll call them super dreadnoughts. Yeah. I would also like to add, in terms of the ship customization, that we're actually, yeah, we're doing work right now to enable uh, you, the players, to actually customize your ship to a certain extent. What we have to just be careful and mindful of is that, you know, there can't be a really short time to penis. I don't know if you're familiar with this term, and it, but it's the time that it takes the user community to morph your feature into a way to represent a penis. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> In, in and knowing, knowing how resourceful you guys are, then yeah. we have to really put our thinking caps on to allow you to do customization, but not create only flying penises. But yeah, actually, yeah. actually, yeah. as we discussed, uh, as Benjamin Bond was talking about on the Friday keynote, uh, we're already working on the, the feature of being able to add decals to ships. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, corporation logos, alliance logos, yeah. maybe, you know, whatever imagery you, you may want or some sort of uh, cool stuff. Pool, so that's yeah, the yeah. same technology basically that you'd use to reskin your ship or change the color scheme. Yeah. How we constrain that system, however, is a different thing. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say, any type of imagery? No, really? no, <laughs> we will have to work from a certain set of approved images. Yeah, yeah. and then we probably are yeah. also gonna have to prevent people from putting them together. <laughs> I mean, because the, that's the, a perfect yeah, way to exactly. construct the, the, the There's two sides to this. It's, it's that yeah. one thing is that we have a certain art, art direction that is happening in EVE. And uh, although I would love it, I don't want to see Hello Kitty ships yeah. in EVE. <laughs> so uh, we will, mm -hmm. over time, yes, of course, we yeah. most certainly will, at one point in time, because since EVE is forever, uh, provide more customization to the ships. Uh, not gonna be Hello Kitty, but yes. Uh, and um, I think also is that, nah, I forgot it. No. Okay. This was also <laughs> this was covered in the art panel that was prior to the Hetna keynote earlier today, and people were asking whether they could create custom patterns for the clothes, etc. Uh, because the clothes system will actually support decals, just like the ships. And uh, again, we talked about jackets just made out of penises. And it just <laughs> it's fun for the uh, person that makes it, perhaps not for the person that wears it. But again, we want to empower you to customize stuff. We want to empower you to customize your characters. We want to empower you to customize your ships, your establishments, to corp logos just to define your identity, but because uh, some of us are authoritarian, fascistic bastards, we like to do it like with our own tools. Like we provide a set of tools, but there's also to keep it within the art style, like, like they say. So you just get like three different shades of gray. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, and two things is that like when we were developing a uh, planetary interaction, time to penis was about one minute because the thing is that, they, oh, hey, see, we planted this, and they're like, penis. <laughs> Uh, and second thing, what the fuck are you doing to your microphone, Tori? Mm. You're always like... It's called beatboxing. Yep. Yeah. Next question. Next. Yeah, I, I would actually like to comment on the super capital versus the dreadnought. We have seen super capitals being destroyed in more numbers than ever before. Uh, the number tripled between November and December. We had a 
huge uh, killing of, I think, like 12 Titans in January. And then, of course, the massacre in, in February. So more stuff being destroyed, just a good thing. I think it's... Yes, so they can be destroyed again. Hi there, it's um, Marixo from MCorp, and I'll apologize in advance because this is yet another question about Titans. Um, now it. that Doomsdays are, you know, single target things, <coughs> are there any plans to allow the low sec Doomsday back? And if not, why not? Because as we all know, pissing off low sec puppy pirate station camping bastards is only a good thing. <laughs> and, uh, and two, uh, I saw EO's talk on the economy, and he likes things being blown up, and low-sec supercaps are often very quickly dead, low-sec supercaps. And that's bad how? <laughs> well, it's not bad, that's the point. Oh. <laughs> that's why I want my low-sec doomsday. <clears throat> well, in, in general, I, I think you can go to on YouTube and check my answer on my opinion on Titans. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think that that... that what was happening before is that Titan was a weapon that it was supposed to like wipe out a fleet and when they were wiping out fleets and it, it, it really wasn't that good because we had like 70 Titans coming in and then you insta jump Titans in, they wiped out the playing field, so on and so forth. So it was made uh, as a more like anti-capital like weapon. And um, I, I think that, I don't know, I, where to go from there, I'm not sure. Uh, but, I mean, it's still a big penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair news. Yeah, and I think the short answer is no, there's not plans to put oh. the Doomsday into low sec <laughs> Damn right it. now. So. Okay, thanks. No, the man with the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hello, I'm Jenks from Vito. It's very cold in space. When do we get our chest hair? <laughs> I'm looking at you. You actually, uh, I would, I would like well, to... Well, you saw a bearded our, uh, lady, so... <laughs> no, no, actually, uh, our uh, art manager has specially requested this, and this has been discussed at high-level meetings, because uh, <laughs> even though he lacks hair on the top of his head, his body makes up for it. So he's <laughs> very... <laughs> Strong <laughs> lobbyist for, for this particular feature. Where was the original player? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I love you. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry I made you laugh. Um, continue with your question. I'm used to it. It's Janks. Anyway, um, you guys have made a number of improvements to the UI, which has been amazing. Uh, however, there was, uh, there used to be a uh, widescreen mode that used to be in the game, which granted, I don't, I think there was a lot of usage that you guys didn't it see with uh, color blindness. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. since that's been removed, it's been rather difficult for those of us that are red, green, color blind to be able to tell when uh, our modules are about to explode. Is there any timeline as to when we'll get some kind of replacement for that kind of workaround? Okay, so I can uh, uh, speak a little bit why uh, that was removed, because I made it, and I'm not terribly smart, uh, so I just threw black things on top of the <laughs> other stuff that we were doing. That was basically the widescreen trick, so obviously that's a very bad idea, but I don't know for true widescreen. Well, Look I mean, the though. thing is also when the feature was conceived and, and when Hilmar initially made it, it made a lot of sense because we were all then playing on uh, four by three monitors, you know, mm -hmm. monitors that had that aspect ratio. Now things have changed drastically and most people are actually playing on 16.9 monitors, 16 by nine. So they're already playing in widescreen. So there's no reason to have this ultra widescreen thing. And really what was happening, the reason why the feature was removed was just that it was becoming a ball and chain for our development process because we kept getting bugs on it because everybody forgot about it because nobody was using it. Well, there happened to be a few people that actually were using it. But according to our stats, very few people were using it. So we made the decision, let's remove this feature. You know, it made sense back then, doesn't make sense now. And it's going to give us more agility and velocity in terms of developing other features. But we have since found that, yes, that this feature was actually being used to help uh, people with uh, color blindness. And uh, my response to that has been, well, that's a problem with the UI. We yeah. should not be using the widescreen mode to fix, which is a fundamental design problem with the UI. 
So I've left it with the UI team, and I can't speak to where they are at with coming up with a solution, but probably Adnan or Torvi can. Yeah, this is a known problem, and, uh, and th that was basically the uh, reaction to it, that, uh, that the white screen wasn't designed as an aid for uh, like color blindness and, uh, and was removed for the reasons that Haldor stated. So uh, we're waiting for the carbon UI guys to finish the stuff so we yeah, can that, fix that, the UI. Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah. Jump in with this, like, hey, and, we're uh, having carbon UI coming into the issue, and, and awesome. uh, are working on designs to like make it better. Yeah, but I mean, Noah made a good point. Uh, there's a lot of design that's being held back right now because we're waiting for the new carbon UI to come online. That's happening now. So we're expecting to see a lot of exciting things in the next coming months in yeah. terms yeah, of yeah, just we were reinvigorating the UI yeah, and designing absolutely. it better. Yeah, we were playing with the brackets actually, yeah. and this was like pre-carbon UI stuff yeah. to like uh, make more brackets so you, instead of just three sizes of brackets, you could actually tell the difference between the different chips. And uh, uh, we put it in there, but then uh, I saw the, the demos that these guys were, were doing, the, all the other amazing stuff, and I actually just said, no, take that out. We gotta wait yeah. because it's gonna be so amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, it, so once, yeah. it's, once it's ready, then yeah. we're gonna put it out there because- And actually it's gonna be a much better representation of, of Excel than you've ever seen <laughs> before. <laughs> That's fair, thanks. <laughs> I feel like the shortest guy in this line. <laughs> um, Song Lee, CSM4. I don't really play with anyone right now, but um, I've taken a couple of questions from the group that can't be here. Uh, one of them is vanity items for real, uh, vanity item trading for real money. Mm -hmm. What type of items are sort of envisioned for this? Can they be traded and destroyed? And when, can we, when are we gonna see that type of rollout? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we're gonna start seeing uh, things come out to, to uh, customize your avatar uh, as soon as June, probably, that are gonna be sort of vanity items for sale that you can, that are completely optional that you can go for. Uh, the things we're looking at now are just additional, for example, additional clothing, some uh, uh, mod like body modifications, more than, than what you've seen currently. Uh, and uh, I think, that answers the question, maybe? Yeah, in yes, terms no? of being destroyed, yeah, we we want pretty much, again, going to the verisimilitude and the reality, we, we want uh, these items to be real, to be items that are transferable, I can take it off and give to AO, AO can fly into low, so I can get blown up by someone, and, and then have it be looted by someone that wears his, like, enemy's jacket. We, we want that. It may not apply to all of the vanity, the vanity items that we uh, will develop, but, uh, that is our design at least uh, yeah, direction. Yeah. And th th uh, this is such a huge question because the thing is that Eve is so vast and deep that uh, there are so many aspects of like where you can actually apply this to and uh, whether they will be destructible or not. Um, I mean, sure, if it ends up on a ship and you're doing something there, mm -hmm. we can, uh, I mean, it's up to us of course. Uh, and we're going through this thought process right now, where they're like, okay, we give you different ship colors. Well, you, you retain your ship colors, sure. But if it's something that is, is actually like, you know, on the ship actual, it'll go away. But again, I'm, th th there's no real answer right now because the thing is that we, we're going through this, through this thought process right now as we speak. So yeah, but, yeah. The, but the main concept is that it doesn't really matter how an item enters Eve. Yeah. It, I yeah. mean, flows through the item economy of EVE, mm -hmm. just like a Plex. I mean, Plex is no different than any other item in EVE, even though you bought it True. technically for real money. So yes. that's a virtual good you bought, which flows through the system just as any other item. So and we will no definitely idea. retain that. But there are also just paradigms there. I mean, you don't look the tattoo. I mean, what's the, where's the sense yeah, in that? Exactly. No, yeah. but uh, silence of the lamp uh, gone bad yeah. type, of a, type of an idea. So. But, but there, there actually was a guy that flew with Plex through a system and uh, lost quite a lot of them yeah, the other guy. day. Yeah. <coughs> but like you should totally lose, your, you you should totally lose all your stuff when you get potted, yeah. right? Like you wake up naked in a, in a pot. And I, I, believe you had, I, I believe you had another question. <laughs> stuff gets blown up, it's good. <laughs> well, the extension was the, the tradability of those purchased items, just like so are they going to be just available as ISK on the market after they've been purchased? Sorry? Oh, so are the items which yeah, might be tradable. introduced to the economy through uh, uh, virtual transactions going to be tradable on the aftermarket? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, 
I think generally just as with flex, then that's the general principle. Yeah. But there might be items such as, I mean, tattoos or scars and things like that, which it doesn't really make any sense. I mean, how do you trade the scar? It's like, have you met a girl and like, hey, uh, I want to <laughs> give you my check too. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of gory, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, bloody it. hand here, like you know, with, with yeah, the skin and everything. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of the other items, it makes perfect sense. You know, you buy sure. a new jacket to wear, of course you should be able to trade that. Yeah. Yeah, but as soon as, and that's really the incentive, as soon as it is tradable on the aftermarket, then it has to be synced out of the economy, otherwise it just uh, inflates and it becomes yeah. worthless. Yeah. So for any item that is tradable, then it has to be destructible. Yes. Uh, I mean, if the item is sort of bound to yourself like a tattoo or a scar, then it just doesn't make sense. And uh, I mean, obviously through the cloning process, you can reapply these things. So like there is a whole game design around that which hasn't been worked out. But I mean, principally, the item shouldn't be any different. Yeah, and 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 I think you, you nailed it by saying like like um, uh, the 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 fundamental like philosophy of Eve is that if it is tradable, it is destructible. That's it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, guys, I'm sorry, but I think we're gonna have to have like perhaps two more questions because we have a party to plan a prep. And uh, since there were so few questions for me, so I just thought that <laughs> I'll just wrap it up or something. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But two more questions or so, and then we're going to have to start planning this epic yep. party that's on the other side of the hall. So. Well, let's uh, split that up, and the internet has a question for you. Yeah, well, pe people, Back people over to Rick. Home. Yeah, right, we'll people just at home watching really us, sending one. us questions. Yeah. Right, cause so IP version 6 is a new thing, I'm, I'm telling you, internet. I'm oh, wait, I wasn't talking to the internet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Okay, uh, the people on the internet are very interested in customization as well, and they keep asking a lot of questions like that. Will there ever be the possibility of having branding of items from manufacturers, like this ship was made by X corporation? I, I think I should okay. let Hilmar answer that question yeah. because he <laughs> made that system seven years ago. Okay, so we made the system uh, way back when, uh, which was designed to implement that. Uh, so it was this idea that you could make batches of types. So each item in Eve would have a type ID and a batch ID. And the batch ID would then infer a lot of metadata around the item. And uh, this was, uh, uh, the design is ready and, and whatnot, but then, Perfect. yeah, it was pretty good. It but then good. The, uh, the onslaught of the internet hit, then we had to optimize Eve a lot to be able to uh, uh, make it scale with, uh, with all of you joining it. And now with the massive, crazy, awesome DP hardware that we have at our disposal, then we can start to even add some of these things which we had way back in the day, which we had to remove just because uh, yeah. we, we couldn't cope with, the, with those features because they were too rich. So uh, this is actually something we just have available and can reintroduce, uh, uh, and especially when it comes to clothing and things like that, and, but obviously for ships. Uh, this makes a whole lot of sense, and, and this is really just getting it on a backlog to re-enable it. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's also that, that not, not just like enabling you to actually have your branded stuff, it's part of it was that uh, we were going to deliver storefronts because that we wanted you to have, you know, not just branded, but actually have your own store. And I think that, that this entire concept is much more than just about branding it, it has to be a much bigger experience than you know. You you, you go there and, and shop it there. So yeah. There, from an economic standpoint, also there is a true value uh, that the customer always know what he's getting. Yeah. So we can look at it in two different ways. If you want to go branding, you will, as Nathan said, you will absolutely have to go storefront, mm -hmm. because then you have localized uh, vendors selling their own stuff. It's like going somewhere offbeat track and finding something unique. Yeah, and it, it, but. It's, it's, but on the commodity market, you want the titanium to be titanium, yeah. you want an apocal apocalypse to be an apocalypse. Yeah. But then if somebody can True. come up with something else, that has to be off that market. Yeah. Last question. Thank you, I'm uh, Baker from Aperture Harmonics. Um, my question is about corporation bookmarks. How do you uh, feel about them, Nathan? Corporation bookmarks? We want them to be, I mean, yeah, we, Totoro no, no, no. uh, was saying something into a microphone, and it was really intelligent. I, I, I promise. Go ahead. Thank you. 
corporation bookmarks, sharing them and distributing them uh, is something that we and then like storing them on the server and storing the folder properly on the server and, and just you know enabling corporations to communicate things like bookmark easier to each other is a thing that we really much want. I mean, all of these things that enable people to work better collaboratively together are very high on our backlogs and, and we do talk about them. I don't know what the exact time or, or design for them is. Maybe you can help me out, Noah, but we well, have talked uh, about this. I mean, we're, we're doing stuff like having corp fittings and, and saving more more settings on the server, so uh, I don't know either what the, what the timeline is for so it, but, but fundamentally sort of we agree. And yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, timeline the timeline speaking, guy. Timeline speaking, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is something that, that I, I have mean, no idea I if mean, it's I hard or easy to implement, but yeah. this is just something we'll run by uh, one of the development teams, probably Team BFF, who is working on a lot of these smaller items, and see where they can rank it on their backlog. And, yeah. and give those tell BFF you about guys it a beer. Yes. Yeah. 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 Give them a few beers, actually. Yeah. And, and not CCP Santos, because he's uh, in the studio, I think, doing EVE TV. Yeah. So and not great, because he yet. doesn't drink. But <laughs> and, and, and also, like, just uh, talking, like, strategy level is that, I mean, um, we want you to be able to log into EVE wherever you are and get all of your stuff. So, uh, I mean, we are thinking cloud level, but the thing is that we have certain technical re restrictions uh, and they're, they're being removed like one by one by both technology in terms of hardware and in terms of software. And uh, uh, I think we'll get there, you know, at a point in time where you can actually log in wherever on whatever device and just with your settings. Uh, there's one thing, since I only got one question, I feel like, <laughs> No, I should, I mean, I, I, the guys know me, I tend to talk a lot, and I hardly got, got to talk at all. But can I ask you guys a question, since FanFest is kind of my area, who of you is, are planning to come back next year? Nice. Awesome. Whoa, Whoa well, I saw one guy here. <laughs> he, dude, why, why are you not coming next year? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, thanks for coming. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you Let's party.